Okay. Uh, so this is me. I'm just going to work on, I heard the bells on Christmas day. Uh, I have already tuned the vocals and I've added things in, put in some markers. Um, and I am going to just use Ableton's in the box, um, effects because I think that they're a little more transparent, even though I like, uh, some of the ones, like I might actually pull up a waves thing and then duplicate that, um, with the Ableton preset, like I said, because I think it's a little more transparent. Um, yeah, so here we go. So the first thing that I thought was we probably need some shaker action happening. So uh, let me add that. Uh, get that out of here. So we got bass, acoustic, acoustic two, which was confusing, but then I realized what it was, so less confusing. Keys, pad, lead vocals, harmony vocals into a submaster. Um, I like routing everything into a submaster because it makes sense in my brain. Uh, it's something I saw somebody else do, and uh, like I said, I think it's good. So uh, basically, <clears throat> what happens is everything goes into the submaster, and then I can do some things here, and then uh, even my return tracks go into the submaster, and then I have the master track. So I can kind of actually master and mix in one thing, which is nice. Um, okay, so really simply, oh, I said I was gonna add some shakers. So let's see if I have a shaker sound effect in my samples. Uh -huh. I do, I have, nope. I'm just looking for like a shaker. Not that. Not that. That would work. So I'm gonna, if I double click, there we go, and. Nice, okay, great. That's really all I want, and then maybe a tambourine hit. <clears throat> Which I'm not, I'm only seeing, oh, maybe this is it. Nope. Cause I'm not on, I'm a dummy, okay. Hmm, I don't hate that. I don't need a snare. I like that, okay, so. Um, I'm gonna add, that's weird, I just saw a flash in my house. <clears throat> add a track there, and then group these. Call it percussion. And I like my percussion to be red, but obviously colors don't matter. Set this to the Submaster, okay. And so then I just need to, all right, so here's why I like Ableton. Check this out. I'm just gonna go ahead and record. I don't need to count in. I heard the bell. All right, great. I don't know why nothing else was playing through, but so that gives us a loop and I can just click and drag that through and make some choices about where I want that to happen. Same thing with the tambourine. So I'm just going to put shaker. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, I deleted the acoustic track. That's why. Well, that's not good. Great. Drag that back out. Thank you. Yeah, all right, so that's dumb. So I just need two. It's gonna come in on two. And four. Great. 
Great. And then I can take this. And now it's a loop. So now I can make some choices. OK, so I'm not actually going to turn that on because I like it, how it starts. So let's just take a listen here to your acoustic. Okay, so I'm actually really happy with that acoustic sound and I don't need a ton of the mic sound, which is great. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I am going to stick a compressor um, on the acoustic channel here. So let's see, effects, compression, Ableton compressor, there it is. And I'm gonna stick an EQ on this guy and on this guy. So for the mic, there seems to be some weird phasing happening. So I'm actually just going to get just a little bit. All right, so basically just the attack of the pick and then we've got here. Yep, so that's pretty low. So bump that up. I love how that sounds, great. So there is our acoustic. Um, and then we'll just worry about, let's see, some EQ there as well. It's a gentler slope starting at 100 because we want to make room for the bass. Okay, so the other thing is, I'm actually going to bring this down, and I bumped this up by 8 decibels, but I may not actually need that. So first I'm going to compress it and kind of emphasize that picking sound. So ratio of around 3 or 4, slower attack, maybe like 20, and then also slow release, like 200. Great, okay, um, so there is that, and that's actually maybe a little bit too much. Nice, okay, so right now it's a really nice, rich, full sound. Uh, so I'm gonna leave it like that, but I don't think, let's see, we've got piano and stuff coming in, I'm probably not gonna need anything lower than this. Nice. So I love how that sounds. And so I am going to go ahead and duplicate these settings onto the next acoustic channel. I know that things are a little bit different. Uh, so let's go and check out how that is. Um, and I wanted to start with the acoustic because that is an instrument that carries the whole way through. All right. Here, come in. Yeah, so I think that'll be nice. Uh, all right, so there's our two acoustic tracks. And let's see, the next thing that drops in is, I think the bass, right? Yep. And the bells, they're ringing. All right, so we have choices now between the low and the high bass.
All right. I'm just going to assume based on what I was told by the bass player that the second take is going to be more fun. And I'm going to assume that there are no problems, but we'll figure it out. So here we go. Nope. Come back. Okay. Let's just check out our EQ here. Yep. So very boomy. And I've got this nice little feature. Okay, so I'm a little worried about the brightness of it, um, but I'd rather be too bright than not. Hello, Donald Miller. So, reminds me I should turn on Do Not Disturb for the purposes of this recording. Okay. I'm just going to assume everything is too loud. All right. So this keys patch um, is interesting. It's hard to get a nice roll off at 100. But I'm actually going to cut out a lot of that mid-range and bump up the highs so it can be heard. Okay, and I'm going to throw on a reverb. So where do I do that? Okay, reverbs. Uh, just to, first to give it some space. So I've got this like uh, bright room here. And set the wetness. Uh -huh. I forgot to compress it, but I definitely want to compress it because I want to emphasize the attack and so the sustain. So I move that up to three again, set this slow attack, and then a really long release as well. Drop that down. All right, so not this. Do a hot switch. Okay, great. So there's that. So now let's listen to it. All right. Okay, so I'm about to cut this. And uh, the reason why is I think it is too busy for what's going on. So here is what we have. So there's already a lot of rhythmic diversity. And uh, so then if you add in this, Then it, I mean, it gives the song a lot of energy, but against what the vocals are doing right here. There is no peace on earth, I, I think that's actually going to be too much. So uh, I'm going to switch here. I 
think that base just grounds us a little bit. So I'm going to delete this section. And I think I do like what's happening here. So, uh huh. So, Josh right in. So a little bit more rhythmically interesting, but still pretty steady. So just steady pulsing, which I think this moment would be a nice thing to have. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And I wonder, there's another thing that I might do now that we have the introduction of the pad. So first, I guess, let's make some space for the pad. I'll we'll figure out where it's gonna sit. Hello, pad. What do you sound like? Mid-range! Alright. It's actually not the worst thing because this is a stereo track, so I'm gonna just... Okay, so this EQ already sends it somewhat to the right, which I think is nice. Peace on Earth. Yeah. Hmm, maybe we use mid side actually. Oh, it doesn't like that we do that. Okay, well. All right, so I like how much space this gives it. Oh, I'm gonna put this in reverb. You know it. Let's put it in a cathedral. Huh? And then actually I'm gonna add a saturator to it as well. All right, so this one is cheating because there is a built-in saturator, but the saturator is free. So uh, it is the saturation knob by so uh, Softube, I believe. Yep. So I'm gonna keep it low, turn it up a little bit, and that just helps make the frequencies more fun. Kind of like a driver. That is a lot of low end we're cutting. So you can hear that drive kicking in there. Okay, so that's nice. Um, so this was just to recap where we're at so far. We had a mid rangey pad, a mid rangey keys, acoustic is naturally mid rangey and then the bass. So uh, we really need to find space to fit all of those. And I haven't done any panning yet, obviously, but I have just done some EQ stuff and then uh, some space stuff with reverbs. And I've stuck them on the channels because I actually want to set them back in space. If I wanted to add reverb, which we'll see in the vocals, uh, then that is what I would do. So yes, yeah, so I've made some arrangement choices with the bass. Uh, you know what, I just am gonna finish that. So, um, and then I'll cut this video. I 
I like going up instead of down. Peace on her. All right, and then we're into the full rhythm here. I might actually keep both of these in. Yeah, I'm going to keep both of those in for now until I need to make a decision. And that decision may be that I'm going to keep both of them in and EQ them differently and see how those fit. So there's that. Um, that's a 30 minute video just on some really basic choices, uh, you know, in terms of keys and EQ placement. So the other thing, you know, the alternate thing is try to find a pad that sounds more like this to begin with. Uh, Uh, so yeah, so I've just kind of taken what you've got uh, given me and I have uh, made some choices. Then we still have percussion to add into this at some point. Um. Oh. And the vocals. So there's that. Let's stop.